as evening fades and the quiet of night sets in most folks retreat to the peace and warmth of their cosy accommodations but not everyone in hillsborough lives in such luxury for some the only refuge from harsh elements and the public eye is a debris-strewn campsite in the wilderness naturally furnished with a mirror but no one is home today with further investigation into the reality of homelessness in hillsborough one hears whispers of abandoned homes on the north west side of town that bedless residents take, sh take shelter in on the coldest nights but boarded up they seem impenetrable that is until you find the main entrance at the back of the house one peek inside confirms your suspicion yet any broader perspectives of homelessness in hillsborough beyond these abandoned scenes remains elusive and faceless it's not until you find your way to the parish house of st matthew's episcopal church and discover the servant mission heart of congregations in the local church circuit that you finally hear of the reverend ronnie terrain ronnie has always lived with his wife sharkita in a home full of children and the homeless have never been far at first just acquaintances at church and school they have become lifetime friends my heart just went out to them he reflects we did what we could and it was by the power of the lord after working as a local missionary in october 2004 ronnie shared with sharkita a new burden god wants us to give his people a place to eat to sleep to relax to meditate to pray it is time bring the vision to pass to establish a homeless shelter in hillsborough as a result of this conviction the last three and a half years have been a whirlwind of phone calls and face-to-face -face conversations and face-to-face -face conversations interrupted by phone calls acting on his vision ronnie helped organize forums that brought together community members city officials and the homeless and ultimately resulted a united commitment to the orange county 10-year plan to end chronic homelessness working to the ends of this 10-year plan and inspired by Christ's words from Matthew 25. Whatever you did for the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Reverend Torin established the neighbor house of Hillsborough. It has been uniting teams of volunteers from local congregations and university associations to serve meals out of the back of cars since early 2005. From these humble beginnings, the operation has grown to the capacity of delivering nearly 80 bagged meals every night, Monday through Thursday, to centralized locations in the north and south of town. Today, all the regulars are out. Michael, Bill, Donald, Mark, Henry, Glenn. They start hanging around Fairview Baptist some 45 minutes before the scheduled meal delivery. While back at the food prep center, volunteers from Lattice Grove Baptist Church count boxed-up meals and worry, will there be enough? As we wait back at Fairview Baptist, let's meet George Vargo with painfully poor circulation in his legs. His doctor has been wanting to amputate, but what's the use when at 82 years old he needs his legs to dry? And he can still move like this, standing by his car in the parking lot. George recalls how his father, a farmer who left Hungary to escape the forces that perennially left him with only a fraction of his crop, warned him that the same would come to pass here in America, and with a half-defeated laugh, George admits, with all the money they are taking out of every dollar, it's dang near happened. When the procession of vehicles carrying food finally arrives, all who have come for a meal, the poor, the sick, and the homeless, gather at the rear hatch of the car to bless the food then each proceed to pick up a bagged meal and run through the line a second time to snatch up any leftovers of course it's not always seventy two and sunny at dinner time even in the midst of a tornado watch and severe thunder showers people still need to eat through weather fair and foul glenn's been a faithful regular at the neighbor house on the street they call him dink why you'll have to ask him yourself. Regardless, his charisma is hard to miss. You think we doing all right with these meals? Let me break it down for you, man. 
Donald comes over and interrupts with a jovial embrace. The spirits are running high at this chance encounter, an opportunity to make conversation with a new friend. And as Glenn attempts to break it down, Donald again interrupts him. Hey, hey, hey. You want to see an engine squat? We all break up in laughter. But once you spend some time with Glenn, you hear a much different story. At 47 years old, glaucoma, an undiagnosed heart condition, a shotgun injury sustained from his former girlfriend, and slow business are all obstacles to picking up work as a carpenter or bricklayer. Of course it's not until Glenn introduces his cousin Patty, a sober source, that you get a more complete picture of his aimless path from drug recovery programs, prison, and self-hospitalization somehow back into tailspins of drug use and brawling. Patty especially laments the time after successful courses of rehab when he ominously resurfaces in Fairview, a black community reeling with drug activity. While living in Fairview, Glenn has no hope of escaping from the destructive forces that have plagued his life. Yet still soulfully singing rock and roll as he goes, every evening Glenn twists his way through the streets of Fairview to the place where he squats, a relative's trailer with neither wiring for electricity nor plumbing for running water. Already dark, he lights a candle, places it at his feet, and tears into the carrots from tonight's bag dinner. Though practically a carpeted aluminum box, the place is impeccably neat. Blankets spread over a mattress, shirts folded on a chair, and several books queued up on the floor. Any discussion of homelessness and drug addiction in Glenn tends to frame in spiritual terms, a cosmic struggle between Satan and Almighty God, and he isn't jealous for many more possessions. You can have all the money in the world, he says, but when you leave this earth, God say you ain't taking nothing but yo black ass. But he never admits to grappling with Patty's conviction that he is incapable of cleaning up his act until he breaks off the same old relationships in Fairview and gets into a more stable living situation. Back on the phone, Ronnie continues to work for his homeless friends. There is much to be done. Just need to work a little harder, he says, with exhausted conviction. We need to get these people off the street. Waving to a familiar passerby, here he stands in front of the future location of the neighbor house's community kitchen, a place for rest, recreation, and prayer. Further fulfillment of the organi organization's vision, he is now in the midst of a two to three million dollar fundraising campaign to move the neighbor house of Hillsboro into this phase and toward opening an overnight shelter. With faith and hope in God, he confidently declares, we will get this done, but for now, he adds, we just got to get that green.